Cheers. Cheers. Happy summer. Happy summer. Starting from cups. That's how you know it's real. Hey, right. This is uh, Houston, Texas. Eight, <laughs> hashtag HTX. We sipping. <laughs> What's up? This is uh, Q here, Bootleg Like Jazz. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, a.k.a. Tara Wayne. And in the studio, we got who? Bon K, the author in the building. Hi. You like the song? I love this song. It's very smooth. Where can people find you online? You can find me at B A N K E, the author on all social media platforms, including YouTube. I have some really dope performance videos, but Instagram is my absolute favorite. Do you perform around town? Yes. Um, Let's get into it. Yeah, where do you perform at? I typically do three gigs a week. It kind of varies. I've been really trying to be strategic about hitting diverse mics. But every Sunday at Shoe Shine Charlie's from 8 to 12, you can catch me at the Gumble Jam. You can also follow them at the Gumble Jam. Uh, that's what's up. Hey, shout out to the Gumbo Jam. Absolutely. Uh, Bullet Like Jazz just dropped an episode with I saw that. Uh, the, gum, uh, yeah, the Gumbo Jam, Matthew Hartnett, Simone Pierre-Louis. You can find them on Instagram, those names. Uh, and Hearts and Horns, we were talking about their... Side chicks and music. Oh, you heard and, it? Oh, yeah. Side dicks. <laughs> <laughs> those two. Yeah. Um... So, uh, where else do you perform, you say? Um, I've been doing Poetry Lounge at the Alley Cat as well. And on Fridays and Saturdays, the Alley Cat features a phenomenal vocus, a vocalist, excuse me, Miss Miriam Echo. And there's a poetry portion before she goes on. So, I also uh, perform and host there. So, when did you get... Uh, talk about your roots in poetry. You know, it started how did that all get started? Very young. And actually, if it's okay, I want to get into a piece first and then talk about the roots. Ladies and gentlemen, Bonke, the host. <laughs> uh, I'm Q. I'm just over here drinking and chilling. Go ahead. Take the show. Poetry is my love, right? And I do this thing where I combine poetry and dance and I think it's really dope. And for months, I've been pursuing this manager and sending him performance videos. Big big manager. Finally get a meeting with him. He's like, yeah, 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 all that's cool, but uh, you got to get to 7,000 followers before we can continue this conversation. So this poem is my response to that, and it's called Fuck Your Followers. There's an art to it, no frontin'. You got to be comfortable enough to flick up anywhere, anytime. Angles, new pose, boomerang, straight stuntin'. Algorithms, captions, rhythmic post times, hashtags, but make it look like it's nothing. You know what else is in arts? Arts. Feeling and experiencing life at its truest, studying the classics and observing the newest, and staring at a blinking cursor, blank canvas, and spitting the bluest. You know. Burying your soul, standing naked and letting people poke holes, stage, studio, page. Everyone can't do this. Damn sure can't do it well. Handle the repercussions of this truth I tell, the dangers of ego as it swells from attention and claps and snaps and collapse from likes or the lack thereof. You were telling me the amount of followers I got trumps me going out into this world every day with the intention of sharing love, absorbing others' joys and sorrows, then spinning them into gold-threaded words that give hope for a better tomorrow. Man, fuck your followers and everyone else who's stuck in that one metric. Niggas, see me in real life. I spit hectic and vogue in this bitch, giving you something you can feel. Call me Dawn, because my love is that real. The youngsters might have to Google to understand that line. It came to me effortlessly, because my pen is divine. That's why y'all filter concocted realities be making me ill. But I'm a boss, right? So I flip and cartwheel. Get my numbers up while doing God's will. So, yo, y'all follow me at B-A-N-K-E, the author. Not for real. Follow me at B. A N K E, the author, and fuck your followers still. Hey, that was Bonke, the author, and this is Q on Bootleg Like Jazz. That was that was fire. Thank you. Uh, when did you write that? Um, maybe two weeks ago now. Mm. Yeah, the same day I had this meeting. Mm, <laughs> mm, interesting. I write the best when I'm angry. There's something about pain. 
that influences art. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes us slow down enough. It makes us a keener observer of our own emotions and the situations that created the emotions. And it just triggers a deeper level. Would it be fair to say that you really got to bleed on the mic? You got to bleed on the mic. You got to bleed on the page. And all in all, I think if you have a general awareness and presence, like I'm sitting here now, when yeah. I, as soon as I came in, I could have been flustered about being late or whatever, but it was like, no, this is the moment. This is the atmosphere. It's beautiful. This is the energy. And when you can tap into that, you can make phenomenal art. So uh, t tell us your roots. What are your roots yeah, in, so in poetry? I've been writing my whole life. Um, dance, because you're a dancer too. Yes. Um, I was, I am an introvert and growing up, mm. yeah, like heavy. And I think that's why Interesting. I think that's why my energy is so high because if I step out of my house, it's like I'm on. I feel like I'm also a follower of Christ. So I believe that in any atmosphere I'm in, I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to share love. Um, but growing mm -hmm. up, I was just, you know, always to myself. I didn't talk until I was three. Um, yeah, I didn't even really speak that much, but I always like made stories and I had imaginary friends and this fantasy world and um I've How many brothers sisters do you have? I have uh two sisters and one brother that okay. I grew up with. Okay. And I'm the youngest. Okay. So it was just like yeah, let her oh, you little got everything. You eat a baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I am spoiled. I can be a brat. Um but in regards to writing like that silence that I kind of enveloped myself with, it helped me I just will watch everything. Mm, I would right. watch like I would notice things that nobody else did, you know? Like under mm -hmm. the table, nobody knows I'm there just watching the scene. And so um, mm -hmm. that has influenced my poetry. I've written as long as I can remember. You know, when you ask a kid, where are you going to be when you grow up? I always said a writer. Mm -hmm. It never waned. Um, once I graduated from college and it was like a real life, you know, I started teaching English. But within five years, I started working on my first novel because I had to come back to my first love. Mm -hmm. But performing poetry, spoken word, is something that's new because there's a difference between poetry and spoken word. Poetry is more so about the structure and the emphasis of the words on the page. It's designed more so for the reader to read it out loud and get that that sensual experience of the words crossing their lips. Whereas spoken word is the poetry that was originally written on the page, but it's also the performance element of it <laughs> when you're adding the theatrics and uh, so you're kind of giving you're giving the readers a visual as opposed to poetry when they create it on their own. So I've, so we've had other poets here on Boulay like Jazz. We got Jasmine Mendez, uh, Deep, uh, Deborah Mouton. Um, and I've asked them this question as well. I'm going to ask you that. Um, you kind of touched on it, but can you dive a little bit more into it? Like, what is how is your process different in writing words for poetry, spoken mm -hmm. word, and then writing it for uh, a novel, mm -hmm. um, literature, and stuff like that? How do you go about, like... You know, that's a great question. You know, I, transcribing, translating the yes, right way for you know, and, right. and, and with authenticity as well. Absolutely, for both mediums. How do you how right. do you navigate that? Yes, because this is New Black is my sophomore novel, right? Um, and a, a novel allows you to draw the readers in slower. You can really paint a picture and take them along this journey. Whereas spoken word, you get what three, four minutes on average. So you got to kind of hit. Like harder, and even as I'm preparing this piece, fuck your followers to debut at um, right about now, I've been going over ways to add more theatrics to take people on a journey. Um, so because I, your medium is right there in front instant. of the people, it's you know what I'm saying? Right, and you have to you have to grab their attention yes. and hold it because right. you know we live in a society of short attention spans. You know, yes. most of us an average eight seconds. But if somebody is sitting down with a book. One, they have, for the most part, the stamina to actually go on a journey with you. You can you can develop it more slow. It's, it's really like gumbo. Mm. But when you're doing spoken word, that shit is microwave. Yeah. Yeah. So what is this? This is New Black. This is my um, sophomore novel. So where can people buy it at? Well, so actually, this book isn't going to be released until 2020. 20, okay. Right. So I'm doing... Um, and where at in 2020? Everywhere. Everywhere books okay. are sold. Okay. Um, the, my first novel, Always Want More, is available everywhere books are sold. Um, with New Black, 
I really needed to take the time to understand the publishing industry before putting it out. Um, people have been waiting four years for this book. Mm. Um, so I have been selling advanced copies to select readers. If you're interested, you can hit me on Instagram, Bon K, the author, you can DM me. Um, and it's a whole experience. It's not just a book that you get. You're, you're really buying into uh, what the book represents, mm. which is this uh, intersection of the classics and the ratchets. Mm. Um, I went to the University of Virginia um, I have a degree in theater and African American studies, a master's in education. Um, you can't take that paper away. You can't. Shit. I'm still paying for that paper. <laughs> so I'm going to drop those names. But um, so I've studied classic black literature um, August Wilson, James Baldwin, Maya Angelou, Pearl Cleach, County Cullen. So this is the foundation of me as a writer. And I'm from the hood. And um, theatrical, I like a good storyline. I like I like that ratchet shit. So my writing style as a novelist, and I would say as a poet, combines the classics and the ratchets. Mm. And there are a lot of women who kind of walk this intersection as well. The only other author who I can say has that style, who was a big influence of mine, is Sister Soldier. Mm. Um, we grew up reading oh, The Coldest yeah. Winter Ever. and But as an adult, I couldn't find a book like that. I couldn't find something that had the substance, somebody who actually... Is a sound storyteller. Hey, everybody, you listen to the Universal Truth on Show 1002. Show 1002, the rubber neck of talk radio. We make you say, hmm, I never thought about it like that before. I'm your host, Christopher Leger, and on this episode of the Universal Truth, I want to talk about, uh, hmm, I always got to kind of clear my throat because these topics kind of, I'm trying to say this the politically correct way, but what I want to talk about today is fast food restaurants that are always out of stuff. <sighs> it's summertime right now. Some of you all are going to be fiending for a hot caramel sundae. Some of you all are going to be fiending for a frappuccino. Some of you all are going to be fiending for some ice cream. And I can guarantee you, the fast food restaurant you go to is probably not going to have it. Or they are going to have it, but the machine is going to be broken, right? Now, I don't understand for the life of me how at 11.30... Let's say 11.30 in the morning, which is around lunchtime. How is it humanly possible for the hot caramel macchiato machine to be broken? How is it possible for the ice cream machine to be broken? How is it possible for, well, you know, I already know the soda machine is going to be broken because they never change the, the carbonated filter or not. But it's the summertime. How is your machine always broken? The restaurant opened at what? Let's say 6 in the morning. No one cared about a hot caramel Sunday until about 11 o'clock, but 30 minutes later, it's broken. Well, here's a little inside tip that I found out is that some of the people that work there, the machine is not really broken. They just really don't feel like going through the ins and outs and the rigmarole of preparing the machine because it takes a lot of work to prepare the hot caramel Sunday or Sunday machine or the Frappuccino machine just so you can get your caffeine fixed or you can get your ice cream fixed. But if it's before 12 noon, there is no reason your machine should be broken. Another thing, too, I want to talk about is when you go to your fast food restaurant, how is it that, and you all can tell, I need to start eating a little bit more, a little healthy. If you all listen to the show I did before, Dirty Hands on the Fruit, I need to start eating more fruit. But how is it that the fries are never fresh? You can never, you cannot, before 12 o'clock, the fries always have to be fresh, Okay. But let me get back to, I'm going to throw that in, that's my me to throw that in, but getting back to the ice cream machine or the Frappuccino machine. And I don't want to sound stereotypical or anything, but there's always certain, there's certain neighborhoods that the machine never works in, you know? There's certain, <laughs> there's certain areas of your city that the machine never works. It's because maybe they don't feel like, maybe they don't feel like preparing the machine, or maybe they just really kind of don't feel like getting the machine ready but here's my tip to all you restaurants if you have to make sure you designate a person that takes care of the hot caramel fudge Sunday machine or the frappe or the frappuccino machine and I'm not saying which restaurant because we're not paid to promote or demote or degrade any restaurant but make sure that the ice cream machine is working it is summer we're going to have record temperatures we're going to be in three digits especially if you live anywhere in a hot tempered zone, uh, like for instance here in Houston, Texas, make sure the machine is working. There is no reason, there is no heavenly reason why your caramel, hot caramel Sunday or your ice cream machine 
or your Frappuccino machine should ever be broken, especially during the summer. Hey, everybody, thank you all for listening to The Universal Truth on Show 1002. You can always go to the show's website, go to show1002.com. You can email me, chris at show1002.com. If you want to send me a message via text or you can call and leave a message, the number is 281-241-SHOW. Again, this is The Universal Truth. I'm your host, Christopher Leger. Check out the website, show1002.com, the rubberneck of talk radio. Where can people find you online again? You can find me at B A N K E, Bonke the Author. That's Bank with an E, Bonke the Author, on all social media platforms. Instagram is my favorite, and my YouTube has my performance videos, which are very special. So, we talked about a lot of stuff today. Yes, we did. You know, we talked about the new black book. We talked about your um, your piece, um, fuck your fuck follow your followers. followers. Yes. Um, we dive into a lot of other things. Any last words, last art pieces you want to read, recite, whatever? To create. I think sometimes as artists and as lovers of art, we want to believe that only an elite few can create. Like, oh, I can never do that. But God is the ultimate creator, and we have the same power. We are heirs of God. We're not servants. We're not slaves. So God created this world through words. You were created through words, and you can do the same. So anything that you see anybody on the show doing, whether it's a poet or an, a thespian or a hip-hop artist, a singer, whatever, you have that same power. I don't subscribe to this idea that art is this elite thing for a few. I believe that everybody is an artist, whether you do hair, you cook, you decorate, you have an artistic ability and you owe it to yourself and to the world to walk in that. Um, so I'm going to end out with this poem. It's called Queen. And again, it is meant to inspire you to tap into your own creativity and your own artistry. My presence brings strife. The ruthless scrutiny in which I examine my own life makes others look inside. And if they don't like what they see, they try to swing at me. But their arms too short to box the queen. Their words just rubber daggers. My thunder shatters false fallacies and wannabes who want to see themselves live like me, moving Free, flawed, oh, so beautifully. I love, in word and in deed, I cry and I bleed and expose my scars to the sun because only the pain we reveal can heal and only the battles we fight can be won. And the work <laughs> is never done, but that's the good part. Every day is another chance, another song, another dance. Watch the queen as I prance. Time with me will straighten your back up. Hold squaws on points, even when my crown slips, they lift it back up and rub to the shines, anointed by the divine, nasty girl. Watch my hips as I whine manifesting blessings and it's time so when he asks whose is it I say mine and you already know it's tight it gets wet at the sight of my own curves distractions just potholes in the road I swerve and I serve the truth straight up no chaser good luck trying to replace her spread lies but they won't ever face her. I pour kerosene on the bridge and strike the match. Because the one thing the queen don't do is run back. The queen is you. The king is true. <laughs>